Today we have to pay a special tribute to Tom Boyer, one of the most brilliant Africans Africa had ever seen. Unfortunately, his life was cut prematurely. It was also a vision of one of the most brilliant Americans America has ever seen. That is President John Kennedy, also whose life was cut prematurely. Revolution and visionary people sometimes don't live very long, but what they do in a short time endures forever. But you cannot implement a vision unless you're also convinced about that vision. You may not be in a position to articulate that vision from a political standpoint, but deep down in your heart, you are convinced and you want to implement that vision. And these are the chorus of this world. The lift opened the American window to Africa, and especially to East Africa. And that window has never been closed, and continues to bring fresh air and fresh seats, and many of us are part of that. Give me university. Give me money to build a university in Tanganyika. And that was the University College of Dar es Salaam, which became part of the University of East Africa and the precursor of the University of Dar es Salaam today. He said, it's good to be lifted, but maybe let us build an institution. And the first money to build the University of Dar es Salaam came from the United States, from the Ford Foundation, from the Rockefeller Foundation, but it was inspired by that airlift. There are three important airlifts in history you should remember. One is this airlift of the 800, which was just the defining beginning of the relationship, institutional relationship that goes on between Africa and the United States. The other one was the Berlin airlift at the height of the war. It may not have been of the same in scale, the lift air lift of student was not the same as that one, but it shows the involvement of America in both this. But there is also a third airlift, which I witnessed in the wake of the genocide in Rwanda. I was working with the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees. We had 1.4 million refugees in the Zen Zaire, and we have almost half a million refugees in Tanzania, and they had to be taken care of. The conventional way of humanitarian response were impossible. It was the American airlift that did the trick. It was a moment in history that changed the lives of so many, that of their sponsors, the Americans, the students themselves, and us, their de descendants. With your fullness, our special debt of gratitude to dear Koravais for preserving for half a century the archives of our parents and for helping us better understand what were their experiences during their brief but memorable sojourn in Ohio, USA from 1960 to 1965. Shortly after arriving in the U.S. in 1960, my father wrote a letter to Cora Weiss informing her that it would be impossible for him to continue with his education without his wife Josephine and their three children. And I must say I thought when I read the letter, my goodness, aren't you grateful enough that you have one scholarship? <laughs> the result of his persis persistence was the airlifting of his entire family to the US. The birth of two more children, myself and my sister, good education and unity of purpose for the entire family. So it does pay to insist. <laughs> Allow me here to mention a special couple 
we, it pains me deeply that I cannot find them, even with the power of the internet today. Mr. and Mrs. Robert Boyajian, wherever you are, it is with love from our hearts that we stand here today to tell you that my father was grateful and my mother and so are we and to tell you that my father did not stop writing to you because he did not care but because he was coming to the end of his life he always remembered you and all those who touched his lives and others in ways that words could never express. He, he never forgot the late Tom Boyer who was responsible for him coming to the States and whose photograph hung on our sitting room wall for as long as I can remember. He spoke of him as a charismatic, brave, generous and eloquent young man, a distinguished leader that comes but just once in a lifetime. We, his children, have launched a special foundation in our t hometown called Sega. It is a foundation that aims at turning Sega Village, a remote village of 5,000 inhabitants near the Ugandan border, into an ICT hub. And it has three programs. One is education. We haven't reached the level of an airlift yet entrepreneurship and community development. We made a promise to our parents before they died. They had always told us never to forget from whence we came. And so we want to tell them today, and all of you, that we have not forgotten. It was his habit, Barack Obama Sr., to hold court at the New Stanley Hotel. <laughs> And uh, he held forth in a very particular way. Um, he was a man of awesome gifts. And I would say that uh, if his famous son and the other siblings inherited a proportion of the old man's gifts, they are very, very lucky and fortunate. He was a brilliant man, remarkably brilliant, eloquent, very, very well read, and who didn't shy away from exhibiting his intellectual prowess. You know, the, the son speaks of uh, dreams from his father, and you know the narrative of dreams from his father. But you know, Barack Obama Sr.'s own dream, it's interesting that he could have easily settled in this country and become a very important academic. He had everything in him to do that. But as soon as he finished his studies, he rushed home. And the reason was this. His own dreams was really given his awesome talents. He dreamed of being part of that army of the new educated Africans who would transform this post-colonial society. That was his own dream. And of course, he shared this dream with many people who came on the uh, airlift. Of course, the treacherous route of navigating that dream is partly what led to his own personal tragedy towards the uh, close of his life, that uh, the frustrations, the compromises, uh, the difficulties were probably too much for his uh, fine sensibility. Remarkable that the son who did not grow up with him, there's so many respects in which he so much his father's son. Now, you know, the, if one had suggested to anybody what might happen to Barack Obama's son, of course, he would have been dismissed as entirely fictional except to his own father. <laughs> he, he had the supreme confidence to anticipate that. He would, he would boast in the world that, you know, with a little lion in the US, and a little photograph that he would show to relatives, you see. Uh, 
And of course, a little lion grew up to be a lion of the world and a leader of the most powerful uh, country in the world. The one person who would have been in a position to describe that, to capture this phenomenon, and to do so with unqualified confidence would have been, of course, Barack Obama Sr. I can just hear him saying, but why are you surprised? Is he not his father's son? <laughs> thank you. Now, what I want to say basically is to thank the Aleph. I benefited enormously from the, the project. It was visionary and revolutionary in its content and it helped a lot of students and most of them I think the one I know went back to Kenya and uh, to East Africa I think in front of me we were about maybe 15 people there so they have gone most of them have gone back some have passed away and some a few of them are uh, in Kenya so um, so I haven't, uh, I didn't return home, and uh, I've been in New York. I have what, two kids? So they can say what they do. <laughs> one is a, a, a doctor, an osteologist, who works for the VA in Boston, and the other took economics, works for the Standard and Poor's. So, and my wife, <laughs> Who is a mathematician who works for American University. So that is. Uh, and I thank Mr. Kim, Cora Weiss, and Matilda Trim. I've been to their friend. Steven Machuka was my classmate. And uh, Naftari Gijaba, who was at the Matilda Trim, died immediately, not long. I'm Dr. Peg Snyder, PhD from the University of Dar es Salaam, first one you ever gave. I also interviewed the students on the Nairobi end and remember Tom and Boya coming in after seeing all the traders in the city of Nairobi. He'd open his pockets and he'd put his money down for the students, empty all his pockets and say, I'll be back. And Tom would go back out and get more money and dump this money. It was a wonderful experience. But his daughter Susan is carrying on his tradition, and I would like us to know that. She's brought over 80 scholarship students to America, to 55 colleges and universities. She's specializing in girls' education, girls who don't have the resources to go on their own, and she too has a website. It's www.zawadiafrica.org. She persuades American colleges and other colleges around in other parts of the world to accept these girl students. And I think that's a true daughter of Tom and Bush. Thank you.